Hello and welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman. Joining us now is the former, former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Hoekstra. Congressman Hoekstra is currently running for the United States Senate in Michigan. He is also an advisor to the Newsmax affiliate website, Lignet.com. Congressman, thanks for being with us. Always good to be with you. Thank you. All right, I'm sure you have seen this uh, new report by the Associated Press. The White House has put special operations strike forces apparently on standby, and they've also moved drones into the skies above Africa. Apparently they are ready to strike militant targets uh, from Libya to Mali if inve investigators are able to find the Al-Qaeda-linked group responsible uh, for the death of U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens, as well as three other Americans in Libya. That is a report from the Associated Press. I wanted to get your reaction to this news, in particular this time, and whether or not you think this is a politically motivated move. Well, let me give you a couple of things. Number one, this presidency, uh, this administration, has been very, very reluctant to go after terrorism uh, through the intelligence community, you know, doing no enhanced interrogations, uh, and really pulling back what I think are boots on the ground, the kind of intelligence that you need to be able to identify the people that were responsible for the attack on Benghazi. You know, if we would have had those feet on the ground doing the types of things that were necessary, maybe that attack would never have happened. So, number one, I'm not sure that we've got the kind of intelligence that will, will enable us to attack with any kind of precision the people that were responsible for the Benghazi attack. I'm more worried about the kind of flippant response uh, coming from an administration that we saw you know, back in the 1990s after our embassies were bombed in Africa. What happened? You know, President Clinton at that time sent 60, I think, cruise missiles to tarmac farms in Afghanistan, believing that bin Laden might be there. Bin Laden had been long gone, uh, and all we did was kill a bunch of sheep after we spent $60 million. Uh, these need to be precise, targeted attacks based on very, very actionable intelligence, and I'm not sure we've got that in northern Africa at this time. So a couple of things I'm hearing from you there. You're concerned that we don't have the actual information that we would need, the United States would need to uh, affect this type of attack, and also you're not convinced that the Obama administration would act as swiftly and decisively uh, as President Clinton did after the attack in uh, Kenya. Well, remember, Clinton acted, uh, he acted quickly, but not very decisively, because, you know, he hit, he hit a target that nobody was there anymore. Um, and so, you know, you're only acting decisively if you have the clearly identified target and you take the target out. I'm concerned that what we may see with this administration is they may use, uh, they may fire a few missiles from some drones at some suspected targets, and we'll either kill the wrong people or we won't kill anybody at all. And so is that the greatest risk uh, of doing an operation like this, perhaps uh, killing, so, killing an asset or someone that could be valuable to a, a further investigation? Uh, hey, once, uh, you know, the, once you send in a Hellfire missile, there's no calling it back. You better make sure you've got the right intelligence because the people at the receiving end of that Hellfire missile uh, are going to be dead. And, uh, you know, we better make sure we've got really, really good intelligence before we start, you know, firing off hellfire missiles in parts of Africa where I'm not sure we've got the greatest intelligence. Now, there was also a quote from uh, an Islamist spokesman in that AP story. Uh, he said, quote, we will multiply the September 11th attack by 10 if there is a U.S. strike in response to the attack in Benghazi. How seriously can the spokesman or these groups be taken for those types of threats against the United States? Well, they'll continue to make threats uh, no matter what. Our, our assets, uh, you know, American lives, they're at risk throughout northern Africa, throughout the Middle East, uh, and those types of things. This guy's making that boast, full, knowing full well they're trying to attack us each and every day, whether we retaliate or not. It's the president's job as commander-in-chief to take out those folks that are, that, are, that are an imminent threat to the United States of America, our citizens and our assets throughout the world. And this threat, I don't think it's an idle threat. I think it's a real threat uh, from this al-Qaeda leader. But it shouldn't deter or influence our behavior at all. We should be doing everything that we can to identify the threats from radical jihadists and eliminate them before they can ever attack the United States. 
And, and one last question for you. Before you go, we've, we've heard about other leaks uh, through the Obama administration in terms of intelligence and military uh, situations before. Are you at all skeptical of this leak and, again, of the, of the timing of this leak coming out now, this information, because it appears like it could possibly jeopardize the operation if there, if there was one? Well, I think, uh, you know, the Obama administration has dug itself in such a deep hole on Benghazi with, uh, you know, either total incompetence or uh, the lies that have been coming out of this administration. I'm not at all surprised that we're hearing about these things. I would expect that these kinds of operations would be considered. Uh, this administration now, uh, after the embarrassment of Benghazi, is going to try to do everything that they can to look really, really tough on radical jihadists. The problem that they have, if as they mount or consider these attacks, they will have to admit that even though bin Laden was killed, Al-Qaeda is alive, it's thriving, it has a breeding and training grounds in northern Africa. These all developed after the Arab Spring, and that this isn't an Arab Spring, it's an Arab upheaval. It has given uh, some great opportunities for al-Qaeda to reconstitute itself and prepare itself to attack America. The president's strategy in northern Africa and parts of the Arabian Peninsula is in shambles. Well, first it was Yemen, now Libya, of course other places as well. Great deal of concern in North Africa in terms of the growing al-Qaeda presence there. We do want to thank you, former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Hoekstra. Thanks for being with us. Hey, good to be with you. Thank you.